How many here have had, had guilt around a parent? How many here have had guilt around, around children? How many here have had any guilt around your relatives and your biological family? How many here have had any guilt around food? Has anybody here had any guilt around sex? Everyone's... <laughs> okay, now this is good. This is good. I'm glad because then we can talk openly like, well, there must be... What's the source of the guilt? If It can't be really about the food. It can't really be about mom and dad and brothers and sisters and children. It, that must be some kind of diversionary projection going on there because it can't really be the source of guilt is these little characters that are moving around <laughs> on the screen or these little pieces of bananas and meat and whatever you want to call it or these bodies doing all kinds of things with their fluids. Oh my God, I've got fluids, inappropriate fluids coming in here and inappropriate fluids going out there and <laughs> I hope they don't see my nose is running. Uh, you know, that's inappropriate. You're not supposed to have fluid coming out in public from a nose. In fact, I can't think of many fluids that can come out appropriately <laughs> in public. That's all for your private mind and your private thoughts, yeah. You, get, you make sure you do that behind closed doors, but you don't go out there and let any fluids out in public. If somebody, if a comedian takes a drink and they spit it out, that might be funny. But if they do it in a restaurant, uh, that's not appropriate. <laughs> so we have to start to realize that the source of guilt is specialness. Specialness is another name for the ego. And Jesus is telling us that you don't want to have an investment in anything of the world. Even your spouse, even your mother and father, even your child, if you put them above all else, then in this world you're still missing the point that everything is equally the same here and the focus needs to go to God. You have to put God above all else. Of course above parents, of course above spouses, of course about your bucket list. Put God, <laughs> put God at the top of your bucket list. If you, if you thought you were going to die, I'd definitely put G-O-D on the bucket list and to hell with the rest of the, the things. I can do without those. I want eternal life, <laughs> not to go climbing Mount Everest or, you know, eating squid or whatever, you know, it just, it's bizarre. So actually, actually, you have to realize that, that when Jesus said, who is my father, mother, sister, brother, he that does the will of our Father in heaven is father, mother, sister, brother. He meant it literally. And when people say, I would love to go home to God, but I've got all these responsibilities for all these dream figures, this one, and I've got that one over there, and that one there, and I'm feeling all heavy and weighed down, I'm sad, I'm depressed, I'm guilty. Oh, come on. Let's look at where is that sadness and depression coming from. Even duties and obligations, you know, when Jesus and the Bible said, honor thy father, honor thy mother, how could you really honor them except through forgiveness? If you try to honor them in any way except by forgiving them, and I mean seeing the false as false, you will have an idol. You will make a graven image as a graven image before the Lord thy God. You have to really, I mean really put God first. Really, that's what Jesus is saying. Because anything that you value that's temporary is a block to eternity. Does that make sense? If God created the eternal and you're putting value in the temporary, then it's basically saying to God, hold off there. You know, I'm not quite ready to say yes to you and be one with you. I'd rather tinker around with these fake images a little bit longer. Okay, well, 
Spirit is not on a search and destroy mission. If that's what your wish, it's a death wish, no doubt. But if you want to play around with the images a little bit longer, well, you're, you can do that. You won't be happy, but you know you're, you can attempt that. But there's still a, a huge level of denial going on there because you've been called by God to wake up and you prefer to sleep. I like that movie that Jennifer Lawrence did called Passengers. Did anybody see that one where they, they're on this long mission in space and they're all kind of in these like pods and they're sleeping because they've got to go so far that they have to sleep. And then there's malfunctions and this one guy, was it Chris Pratt or plays it and everything, he wakes up and he's walking along all these pods and he happens to look in one of the pods and it, it's Jennifer Lawrence. She's cute. And this is a long, lonely trip in space. I think I can maybe find a way to wake up Jennifer Lawrence if I'm going to be out here for weeks and months and years <laughs> with nothing. <laughs> it's Jennifer Lawrence, you know. So he, he wakes her up. She is pissed. She is pissed. She has an expectation she's going to be sleeping all the way. <laughs> And she is pissed because she's been woken up ahead of schedule. But to me, when I watched that movie, I was just in the theater bursting laughing. I thought, now there's a sleep addiction. <laughs> You'd rather sleep than be woken up by a passenger, a man. <laughs> she, at one point, one scene, she just hitting on him, beating him, trying to beat the hell out of him. She's got all of her rage coming up. And to me, I'm just in the theater laughing, going, that's a strong attraction to sleep, <laughs> to generate that kind of rage. <laughs> but this is what we're talking about with the human condition. There's a sleep addiction going on here. There's a, there's a draw, there's an attraction to the subconscious mind, to the darkness. Now, what we do is we say, okay, we want to move in the right direction, and that direction would be to start to take the focus off of the body and how can my thoughts, my mind energy, my focus, how can I pour my heart, my emotions into something that will bless the whole. That's what made Jesus different seemingly from the sleeping humans is he wanted to know what is God's will for me. He wanted to know what serves the whole. 